So we are with Everett Ressler, who is uh, the Director of Humanitarian Development at Quintera Group. Um, can you tell us a little bit about Quintera Group and what it does? Quintera Group is a consulting group formed by people who have been working in the humanitarian field a long time. And uh, so after, it's an attempt to bring people together to address problems in the humanitarian development field. Great. And so, in terms of uh, the conference, um, bringing people together, do you think that, um, has it done a good job of that? You know, in my view, <coughs> and having worked in the humanitarian field for many years, and have been to a number of these summits and meetings like this, uh, my opinion is that, um, first of all, to look a little bit philosophically at what's going on. And first of all, it's, in my view, uh, really important to remember that ideas uh, and vision and um, goals are actually the hidden hand that drive all of what we do. And so to have a meeting like this, it's really about uh, people reflecting on what we're doing and what we should be doing, what we want to do differently and better. So it's very much um, an aspirational meeting. It's about, you know, are we going where we want to go? So <clears throat> I think these meetings, there's always a question, do these big meetings have any impact at all? And in my view, it's absolutely yes. It's hidden, it's often quiet. <coughs> and the consequences of these meetings actually happen before the meeting and after the meeting. The meeting just uh, kind of brings together a consensus on these things. But what you see is that people from uh, all around the world, in this case, have actually focused on the issue of humanitarian action needs and said, okay, what what really needs to be done? Where are we? You know, what are the threats? What are the needs? How, how do we go forward? <coughs> this meeting never will capture all of the dramatic uh, discussions, thinking, and changes that will come about. It, it can never do that. So it's it's a crucible. It's a it's a it ferments. It makes people think. So I happen to believe that it's a very good thing, and um, I think it will have consequences. And if we begin to look at the consequences, what those consequences are, I can't project that. <coughs> but let's say certainly you can see certain of the basic trends. And you know, first is this recognition, but this is said in every summit I have ever been, and in fact, it seems to be true as well that the threats are more real, larger scale, not necessarily higher in incident, <coughs> greater humanitarian impact. So we face a world at this period when there's a lot of pessimism, that is a lot of uncertainty, and where there are just vast numbers of people who are on the fringe or in acute emergency situations. <coughs> So it's, it's absolutely normal, natural, and typical of these summits that people would talk about how do we prevent it, how do we respond to it better. Uh, and so the, the discussion of the problem itself, there's nothing new in the summit. That is, the issues are not new, uh, the issues are very old. And that's okay. That's not a bad thing. And in 50 years from now, when they have another summit, more summits, they will be talking about essentially the same issues. <coughs> That's okay because it's about humans and how we interact and how we work together and, and deal with these issues. So, is it you know in in that regard is it substantive what we've heard? And I'd say, in my view, many of the issues are substantive. That is to say. The issues of principles, where we're going, uh, what should guide us, uh, the question of how we work together is fundamental. And it seems to me if there's one theme that comes out over and over, 
is the question of how we work together. And the question is, why is that such a dynamic issue? Why is it so critical? I mean, that it keeps coming up all, all the time. And that many people are quite disparaging about that. They say, you know, I've been there 10 years ago, and now I see the same issues are still here. And I'd say, yeah, they will always be here. And uh, because, and part of this is the changing world we live in, in my experience. Remembering what it was like in the 1970s, for example, in these summits, this kind of a summit, humanitarian discussions. And there, for example, you saw um, then governments didn't have, or that was the exception that they had emergency management systems, emergency uh, laws in place, uh, and so forth. Now that's changed. That is, almost every government has had much stronger systems, not all, <coughs> but most. And governments are taking a much more active role. A civil society has exploded, so that means that there are now, over the last 30 years or more, uh, but there are literally tens of thousands of small civil society organizations in every country, each with concern and, and an action that they want to do something positive in the humanitarian action. So it's not in any way surprising that the dominant issue should be how do we work together to make coherence in a situation in which population has greatly improved, the environment and uh, has is more and more fragile, the, um, the the threats are ever more present, and uh, you have many more people that are want to be involved, and so. These are still unknowns to a large degree, in my view. It's um, no one quite knows how to deal with this, this explosion of capacity by civil society, uh, how the role of government and civil society should work in these situations, uh, and the uh, continuing, uh, let's say, uh, ever increasing threats of uh, displacement and war and uh, environmental degradation. It's ever more serious. Do you think that, you know, you've mentioned that uh, now there is an explosion of actors and especially local capacity has grown in terms of humanitarian um, develop, uh, delivery. And so do you, th and, and, uh, and compounded by that, there's a different environment to what we were seeing uh, perhaps 20 years ago. And the fact that there, the system has should change or is maybe changing because of technology or because of you know the need for change. Do you think that the, the summit is actually recognizing this kind of change? Is it is it telling people that it should change or is it who, what's the role of the summit in all of this? I don't think that the underlying dynamics that are causing these things are much focused on in the summit. The summit tends to be more practical, focusing on what to do for humanitarian action. I think it's uh, beyond the summit, but it merits real consideration to look at the drivers of all this, these issues that I've spoken of. And uh, so, no, I think we need to, you know, we'll all be aided in this effort if we give much more consideration to looking at the bigger issue. I happen to believe that it comes from societal changes, that is, some of the things that I've mentioned before, people's orientations to uh, hierarchy and governance and uh, uh, how they want to work together. And these things are driving not only in humanitarian field, the, the ambiguities, the questions about who should do what, roles and conflict, the great, uh, let's say, um, questions that are being asked by many civil societies about governance and the struggles that governments have in governing. Uh, the, these reflect something real fundamental in society. The humanitarian uh, or issues that we see here with regard to coordination, uh, action, uh, what role, uh, how do you prevent the linkages between uh, cause, political, and uh, consequence for humanitarian and so forth. 
th these actually are all um, these are all part of a bigger societal question, in my view, that's going on. Mm -hmm. So we mustn't lose sight of the purpose of the humanitarian. Mm -hmm. That is, it should be very simple. We should keep our eye on the question of the individual, on the question of humanity. No doubt about that in all cultures. But, the, but to understand what's happening, you have to step back, in my view, and look at it a little bit more to say, okay, in the change world, what new ways do we have to work together, how do we do this in a different way, and uh, I think it's largely uncharted. Well, thank you Everett so much for this deep analysis and a, a very different take on, on the summit, thank you. Thanks.